Now let's look at another one of India's neighbours, Pakistan. There are whispers of a conspiracy afoot, a way for the government to solidify its grip on power. There are rumours of a scheme involving Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf party leaders. It's called Minus Imran. Now the name is a dead giveaway. It sounds like a way to sideline the former Prime Minister. And it already seems underway. This is Fawad Chaudhry, Pakistan's former Minister for Information and Broadcasting. He was once a staunch Imran Khan loyalist, but he recently quit the party, allegedly over the violent protests that rocked the nation on 9th May. Remember, violence had erupted during the protests. People even burnt down Pakistani military buildings. The Pakistani regime says Imran Khan orchestrated these attacks. Fawad Chaudhry and several other leaders quit the PTI after the protests. Chaudhry was supposed to be taking a break from politics, but it seems he's had a change of heart. Yesterday, he went to visit a former colleague who's currently in jail, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Pakistan's former foreign minister, the vice chairman of the Pakistan tehreek e insaf party, and Imran Khan's right-hand man. This is what Chaudhry told reporters after the visit. We met Shah Mahmood Qureshi a little while ago. We held detailed talks with him. Our belief is that Pakistan needs to move towards a strong future. We need to bring forth and move towards solutions. And we will bring about solutions. He then said that the 250 million people of Pakistan could not be left at the mercy of the ruling regime. It sounds like a plot to get Qureshi to defect, to abandon Imran Khan. But Khan may have seen this coming. Around a week ago, the PTI chief had earlier declared Qureshi as his replacement. This was in case he was arrested or disqualified by the Pakistani authorities. It's a move that could stop Qureshi from defecting. And it seems to have worked. Qureshi's son tweeted this video last night after the meeting. That tweet says, We stand with the ideology of Tehreek e Insaf and Imran Khan. Khan released an address to the nation yesterday. He claimed the government was targeting him and his party candidates. Khan says a new political outfit is in the works. He called it a King's Party. It's a jibe at Pakistan's checkered political past. This tactic was used in the early 2000s. Back then, it was the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz that was crippled. Military ruler Parvez Musharraf allegedly asked PMLN leaders to reinvent the party. Senior leaders defected and created the PMLQ. It was basically former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's party minus Nawaz Sharif. The PMLQ party won the 2002 elections reportedly with Musharraf's blessing. That's why the PMLQ was referred to as the King's Party. Now Imran Khan says a new King's Party is in the works. He claims that parliamentary seats in the next elections will be divided. Divided between the new King's Party and the current ruling coalition. And he's implying that this new party will basically be the PTI minus Imran Khan. Khan has been trying to prevent this. He has been asking to negotiate with the government, but Islamabad has refused so far. The regime says it won't talk to Khan unless he takes responsibility for the May 9 protests and apologizes for the violence. Of course, that kind of admission would delegitimize the former prime minister, making him easier to sideline. Will this really happen? Will history repeat itself in Pakistan? It looks like it's heading that way. We'll keep you updated on this as the story develops. That I bring you vantage shots, images that tell the story. Starting with Ukraine, part of a Russian missile landed on a busy road in Kyiv. In the United States, a car launched into air after hitting a tow truck ramp in Georgia. We'll show you a body cam footage of this incident. 
in Peru. 11 people have been injured in the traditional bullfighting festival. Here's a disclaimer. These visuals might be disturbing for some viewers. And finally, what makes June 1st significant? Taking you back in history, on this day in 1984, Operation Blue Star began in India. It was launched by then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. The aim was to capture a Sikh militant and his supporters who had taken shelter. This at the Golden Temple in the Indian state of Punjab. As a fallout of this operation, Indira Gandhi was assassinated later in 1984. We leave you with this. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Previous 10, 50, 84. exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defence minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colonist.